Welcome to Scumcast, another outreach project by the Sovereign Grand Lodge of Malta. Following a series of articles that began to appear in April 2023, in the SimonMershaker.com blog penned by a Marissa McAuliffe, a blog reader well qualified on the topic of Freemasonry, submitted a series of explanatory articles and responses to the often inaccurate or incorrect expressions made by Ms. McAuliffe. With the permission of their author, the response articles have now been converted from their original written form into podcast versions of the same articles and using a virtual narrator. Part 1, It is time for Malta to start forming an objective view of the Freemasons. Allow me to declare my interest in this matter, before proceeding, to correct many misconceptions vis-à-vis the subject of Freemasonry and the claims that Freemasonry is somehow involved in the despicable murder of Daphne Caruana Galizia. I will then proceed to give as objective as possible an account not only of the history, and structure, or rather lack of it, of Freemasonry itself, but also of many of the claims its critics accuse it of. I will also address the nonsense, that many so-called Masonic historians, try to pass off as Masonic history in order to embellish its history and their pockets. I will then proceed to address topics such as Freemasonry and secrecy, Freemasonry and religion including the accusation of deism or the practice of the occult, Freemasonry and nepotism, Freemasonry in Malta, and last but not least Freemasonry and the law. This I believe is necessary because one thing that is getting lost in all these claims and counterclaims, is the confusion around the subject and the loose use of the term. If members of Opus Dei, the Mafia, and other forms of secret societies, and nondescript criminals are all Masons, then the term Freemason would actually lose all its relevance. This will obviously necessitate writing at length, and presented to the reader as a series, but I believe it to be necessary given all the misconceptions that surround the subject. Allow me, to also declare that I have known Mr. Simon Cussons for several years, and consider him not only a gentleman, of impeccable integrity but also a personal, and dear friend. The recent revelations that he is not only a Freemason, but also the Grand Master of one of the regular jurisdictions operating in Malta, has not affected my opinion of him not least because several of my own English ancestors have been active Freemasons locally as well as abroad. Knowledge of my direct ancestry and a lifetime of experience has taught me to never judge a book by its cover, that life is not black or white and that truth is always more fascinating than fiction. But enough of that. Mr. Cussons can speak for himself, and all who really know him know what kind of man he truly is. My interest in Freemasonry commenced when I was still a young teenager, listening to my relatives speaking in hushed tones, that among their own very direct ancestors, there were those who were Marzuni, buried in unconsecrated ground at both the Mzidabastian Cemetery, and at Tarbraxia. The more the hushed tone, as if their ancestors suffered from the plague or were guilty of some despicable act, the more my curiosity was piqued. Here was something well worth looking into in detail. I needed to know the truth of my own family history, of my own ancestors and their lives and times, for it was rationally irreconcilable to me that ancestors that were clearly loved and respected by family and friends, had aspects to them that dare not be mentioned in front of distant relatives let alone strangers. It is this dichotomy that set me to study the subject in considerable detail for many years, and which taught me once again that things are never quite as simple as others portray them to be.